Um, this is what I use this for. This is that little uh, hook blade utility knife. It works awesome. Uh, I'll just start back here. And these suckers are sharp, so watch yourself. Um, we're going to come back here. And basically, once it's in there and it's started, you're golden. Um, you don't want to get too deep. You're going to get into the tendons and the bones. Try and stay just underneath the uh, skin. Every once in a while, you got to stop and get the hair out. Um, let me move this down here. I can make sure you guys can see what I'm looking at here. Okay. Come right in here again. You can see, you know, we're following this hairline uh, right here. We'll get this knife back in here. We're going to go right up. Follow this hairline between the red and the white on the belly. We're going to go right up under his uh, manhood here. Okay, we're going to come over to the other foot. Do the same thing. I'd be a liar. Okay, following that hairline, come right up under his uh, gonads again. And that's it. Now, I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do it. This is what I do. I get them balls right out of there you know it's kind of like deer hunting I guess you could go hang them from a tree if you wanted to okay now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna take out the bung hole here and I suppose we could probably use this knife again too um, no, vice isn't gonna let us come under here and you don't want to take off too much. You just want to barely, barely, barely take that sucker out of there. Okay. There. Hopefully you guys can see this. And there. Okay. We're going to let that on, leave it right on the hide. Now, come in here, find your hairline again. I usually come on the back side of the knee. And we're just going to very easily, very carefully, get it started. And once you get it started, pull my sleeves up here. Once you get it started, you almost don't need a knife, especially if they haven't been dead for all that long. Just work your thumb in there, back and forth. Once you get up towards the upper end, you'll need to use your knife again. But be careful, these things are a lot uh, more delicate than a coon. Um, once you work your finger down in here, you can roll it right through and bring it back from the other side pop it right out and you're just gonna go like this till you get down to the hock and uh, I usually cut them off somewhere right in here um, it's okay to go a little long you can always trim it later and then uh, we'll do the same thing on this other foot peel it back to his paw again hack it off and that's the hardest part. After that, it's easy. You're going to come up here, pull down on both uh, legs, and I usually start them on the stomach. We're going to cut his uh, little pecker nail out of there. Like so. Get rid of that. Uh, come back here and loosen them up around the base of the tail. I always do this with my finger because this is a really delicate uh, area. I mean, you're going to have to use your knife a little bit, but don't do it until you absolutely have to. Okay, uh, you can see my thumb right there. I got it all the way through. Now we're going to take them out of the vise. 
and put them back in the gramble. Okay. Let's get it up there above his hawks. And this is uh, all downhill from here. This is the easy part. Okay. We're going to come over here and uh, somewhere. Where did I put it? Right here. Get my little uh, get my little knife. Uh, I keep this thing duller than hell. This is the knife I use when I'm working really delicate areas. Um, I'm gonna give this a little bit of pull. Make sure your bung hole is separated from the rest of the body. And what we're gonna do, you gotta kind of want to cup it. Let's separate this from his back a little bit first. Um, careful on the bellies. The bellies are the uh, most delicate part. Now, hopefully you can see this, but see that little white? That's, that's your connective tissue. This darker, creamier color, that's his hide. So you got to be super careful. As little cutting as possible. And I usually like to get it down just a couple inches, which right there should be good enough. I'm going to take our little homemade tail stripper. You can buy these. Uh, I took one of these little pegboard deals and put it in my vise, bent the tip, and this sucker works great for me. Um, I got a little bend here in the center. That's where I seat the tail. And uh, I usually give it a little bit of pull from the side. And then go back straight and you're just pinching on both sides and a nice firm pull down. Um, make sure you have the hide pulled down enough that you can pull the tail tight and you're not stressing this because you will rip the corners of this belly so easy. My first couple I did it something terrible. So make sure you got enough slack in your body and when you're going to pull on the corners of the belly be really super gentle. All right, now we should have enough to pop the tail out. That's it. Uh, you can do this now. You can do it later. I usually do it right away. I'll uh, try and center the tail up and uh, take your tail stripper. You just start this in the tail and zip, and you're done. Um, opens it up so you can get your borax in there and dry it out later. Uh, the rest of this is easy as pie. Just nice, gentle little pulls, front and back, front and back. Unless you're uh, one of those guys that's got a skinning machine. In that case, you're just a cheater. <laughs> I'll probably make one before next year, I hope. Okay, now, once you get down here, we're going to remove the feet. And uh, we'll get our old handy-dandy Home Depot saw. Make sure you keep the hide off it. And I like to come right up here above the uh, little pad and give it a couple nice pulls. And don't cut yourself. That's done. Oh, we're going to save those feet. I've been uh, trying it anyways. We'll see if it works. I've been uh, hiding them at my dirt hole sets for a little extra scent. It seems to be working. Okay, get down to his elbows. You know, work your finger in here. Some guys use a railroad spike or a nail. I don't like to. I tried it, and all I could think about was jabbing a hole in the hide. So um, if you don't have it down enough, just bring your knee up here like this. It gives you a little extra leverage. Just make sure you don't have your go to meat and pants on. All right, now you're just going to pull it all the way through and pop it out just like that. Okay, now take our little doll knife again. I'm going to come in here and very carefully loosen this up. If you're not sure where exactly the height is and the meat is, cut high. 
You can always take it off later. Once you loosen it up a little bit, you should be able to start pulling it. Um, now, I uh, do all my dispatching with head shots. Once you start seeing this, you got to get ready for the blood. We're going to try and uh, keep as much blood off the pelt as we can. So this is what I do. I get that ready. Now we're going to come in and start pulling and peeling. When you see this jelly looking stuff, that's, uh, that's the coagulated blood. And if you're not ready for it, when you finally get to the, the wound, it's going to pour all over your hide. And it's that much more cleaning to do. Okay. See these two bumps? That's his ears. You have to take the cartilage out of these. Uh, I see a lot of guys like to do it while it's on the animal. I rip half the ear off every time I try it that way. So I just come up here high and cut all the way through. Here's the blood coming. Hurry up and get the other ear done. Okay. Hey, Jenny. Now you see the blood's coming all down the hide. We don't want to get that into the fur so we're going to take our little wrapping we made just like this and tie it in a knot it's not going to keep it all out but it's going to keep most of it out we'll grab our dull knife again um, right after the ears is the eyes we'll come underneath here keep pecking away make sure you take your time when you're doing this so you know every every pelt is money you know time is money but if you're gonna rush them and mess them up that's all that much less money here's our entry wound here's your eyes these two uh, little pads of muscle right under the ears if you're gonna start cutting in high always start high until you can find them here's the eyeball have some spare paper towel ready to be cutting the, uh, or wiping, I should say, the blood away. Okay. And try not to do that. Try and get his, his actual, uh, I don't even know what you call him, the black lining of the eye, I guess. Um, keeps the eyes from stretching out, ripping on the stretcher. I guess this knife is a little too dull. Okay, once you're past both eyes, it's easy as pie. We're going to wipe some of this blood off here so we can get a little better grip on our hide. Grab the ear holes we're going to open up the backs of the jaws here. There's one. There's two. Now we're just going to stick our finger in there. And uh, if you nick the bottom jaw, don't worry about it. Just don't nick the top jaw. We're going to come in here, work our knife carefully along the bone. You want to leave the gums on. It helps hold them on the stretcher. Okay. Now when you get to the cartilage of the nose, you're going to cut straight down to the lip. See the cartilage is in there? We're going to come in here with our sharp knife and one, two, three. We're going to cut the bottom lip right off. It's not used. And that's it. Um, in our next video, we'll show you how to uh, flesh them. You know, we got to get all this blood and this fat off here. Um, we'll flesh them. We'll show you how to put them up on the board and uh, get them ready to dry. 
All right, we'll 